Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, new video, which means more software changes. Um, this time I'm going to be covering version 3.2.4. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a new theme. And uh, let's see, I'm just going to take a basic uh, text games view. And okay, so uh, one of the changes I've made kind of under the covers is in regards to uh, custom fields. Um, if you're not familiar with that, custom fields is um, a feature within LaunchBox, and it's been there for quite some time now, where you can supply additional metadata um, uh, associated with a series of games. Um, and I know it's been leveraged by some different folks out there, um, for example, you may want to store a, um, a, a serial number associated with each of the games for whatever reason. Uh, what, whatever the, the, the purpose or whatever the value add is, the feature is definitely there. And the community theme creator has been able to retrieve these values. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to pick a text field. And let's see, I'll make it auto size, auto size, scroll down to metadata. And I'm going to pick serial number. Now, any fields that are defined as custom fields will have an asterisk and they will appear at the top of the list. So I'm going to pick serial number and let's increase the font size. Okay. And I'm going to engage the virtual gamepad and uh, go down through the list. As you can see, the value is changing. And I only supplied three values for these three games here for the Ace Combat 4, 5, and 0. Um, one of the features I've added is this uh, three little dots on the fallback value. The same is true actually for constant. Okay, so let me just go back in and pick serial number, but fallback value just gives you a, a much larger space to key in text. There is no serial number associated with the uh, <laughs> selected game. All right. <clears throat> so if I go down now, there you go. All right. So just to kind of show this off a little bit, let's change the uh, update frequency to during selection. As you can see, it's instantaneous. So I've actually improved the uh, retrieval time of uh, custom fields from the uh, platform uh, XML files. Um, average average uh, retrieval time now is, uh, I think it's like three, three milliseconds. So it's actually three times faster. And uh, while it's actually performing um, the lookups within the XML files and retrieval of information, it's taking up far less uh, Windows memory resources. Okay, so it's efficient and a lot faster. It was a lot more code on, on, my, part, or on my part, but it's well worth it. It's very, very quick. All right, so... Um, the retrieval process is uh, very, very quick. And if you weren't aware, I actually have a little folder with um, 
media inside them. So let me just add an image. Uh, let's see, I'm going to hit browse. I'm going to drag that folder into there. And I'm going to use metadata again. I'm going to select serial number. I'm going to tell it to use the serial numbers folder. And now it's translating this AC1234567A into an image because the file names are named in the same way. All right. So again, if I use the virtual gamepad, you can see the barcodes changing. Okay. Um, just in case you weren't aware of that, where you, and, and that that's not just for custom fields. That's for any, any value you can translate to an image, but I just wanted to show you how fast, um, this is, and actually, as far as performance within the view, obviously, you know, the plugin is, is retrieving the custom field value, but it deploys the code once and then any other UI element that references that same, uh, serial number custom field will reference that one instance of code. Okay. So it's not deploying multiple lookups and hitting the XML database multiple times um, because the performance would be awful. So that was another change that I've made. Again, it's under the covers. All right, so just overall view performance uh, is accelerated and obviously the retrieval of data is uh, accelerated and with the reduction of uh, memory utilization, all right? So let's see, um, and I covered the fallback side of things. So whenever you see these three little dots inside a text field, you can expand into a larger window and key in your text. Okay. Um, let's see, while I'm here, let's click on the image. We'll go to the angle and I just double clicked or single click, sorry, on the uh, value itself. So if I key in 100, 10, 350, zero. Now you can directly uh, enter the desired angle. And the same is true for, uh, let's see, if I add a drop shadow and uh, let's see, depth like so. Two seventy, one eighty, ninety, two sixty five, wh whatever you, whatever you, but you get the idea. Okay, so direct input into um, into this control now. All right, that way, if you find it a little bit frustrating to get the exact value and using cursor keys, now you can just enter the value. All right. So that's another, um, change that I've made. Um, I'm going to keep that here. Um, now another, <clears throat> excuse me, another feature that I'll show Let me add an ellipse. Let's change the color to a little bland. Okay. And what I'm going to do is add visibility conditioning to the ellipse. So by default, it's collapsed. Visible when serial number, this is brand new. You were not able to condition against um, custom fields before. Now you can. If the serial number is AC one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, make it visible. All right. Again, using the virtual gamepad. 
All right. And the ellipse is set to, let's see, what is it set to? Once selected, let's make it the same as the update frequency on this one. Yeah, during selection. Same with the image and that. Don't have to, you can have them different if you want, but let me do that. So now you see it's instantaneous. There's no delay. Yeah, very quick. So conditioning against custom fields is brand new. And we'll take this a step further because this kind of bleeds into another change that I've made, one that I'm very happy with. Um, yeah, so let me let me get rid of uh, visibility conditioning. I'll default to visible. Let's cut the items out. Okay, stays there. Let's go down to animations. So when the UI element is first loaded or displayed, or before it's displayed, the first thing we want to do is change the opacity, and I'll set it to zero so you won't see it, like so. And then what we're going to do is, um, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We are going to have a custom condition. And I'm going to say when serial number is equal to AC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We want the opacity to be brought up to 100. It's going to take 0.5 seconds. Let's add an easing function. Let's do power ease. Ease out. So if it's equal to that value, it fades in. I'm going to copy that condition, paste it. I'm going to edit it, change the condition. I'm going to say if it's not equal to AC one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to change the opacity to zero. It's going to be a little quicker. Change the ease in function. Again, use the virtual gamepad. Go down, fades out, fades in, fades out, fades in, fades out, fades in. So now you can instead of having uh, UI elements just blitting on the screen uh, when the visibility condition is, is kind of met, now you can use the same conditions and condition your animations. You may not want opacity, you may not want it to fade in, maybe you want it to move in from the top of the screen or from the right of the screen or bottom of the screen or whatever it may be. Um, now, I have shown you this before, however, the method that I was using before to detect uh, your condition, to see if the condition was true and engage an animation, it wasn't working 100%. So I've come up with a brand new method and guaranteed to work 100%. With zero lag, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, it, it came to me last week and I quickly implemented it. So out with the old, in with the new, it's, it's beautiful. And I'm very, very happy with it. Um, so just to recap, the custom condition has been modified. It works 100%. More importantly, or just as important, I should say, you can reference uh, custom fields anywhere in conditioning. In this example, uh, custom custom triggering or custom condition for an animation, just as you could do for visibility conditioning. Um, and let's see, I think that's pretty much it, exhausted from a view perspective. Let's go to a horizontal wheel games view. And Let's just move that up like so. Nothing too crazy. And then I'm just going to say, if we'll go into wheel item templates, uh, for a game, uh, 
And let's see, what do I want to do? I'll create a background color. All right. Let's pretty much do the same thing as we did before in the view. Um, what was I going to do? Let's see. Metadata. Serial number. No. Whoops. No serial number. Let's increase the font size and change the font color. It's not very readable. And actually, let's do auto size, auto size. And I'll put it up there. And then add an image. Oh, excuse me. I'll put that here. Uh, auto size the height, metadata, serial number. I'm going to get it from the serial numbers folder. There's our serial number. Okay. Um, now, new wheel item uh, UI element. I've added the ability to have text scrollers. So I'm going to add one. And let's change this. Let's, yeah, I want it vertical. Let's pick metadata. Let's go with our uh, trusted game notes. Let's change the font size. Let's change the startup delay to zero. Change the scroll speed to, I don't know. Yeah. And let's see, I don't want to do auto reverse, but I do want to add, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is that eight? Seven. I'm going to say there's seven lines, seven rows. So I want seven lead-in blanks, seven trailing blanks. And now the text starts at the bottom. Okay. So it kind of leads in because we've got the leading blank rows. So all the functionality that you're used to with the text scroller on a view is now available within the wheel item. Okay. Now, I'm going to just simply copy the text scroller. I'm going to change this one to um, a horizontal. I'm going to change the metadata to, I think, uh, just the game name, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, just the game name. like so. All right. Yeah. So I'll save it and I'll go ahead and apply it to this view and then we'll go to the view. And there's our new wheel item being displayed as you can see. It's all working nicely. And there's our serial number being retrieved for the first three games in the list here with the associated image, vertical scroll text, horizontal scroll text. It's a bit much. Probably don't need all this uh, working with all the wheel items, but you know, I could just I could have easily have added conditioning to say only display scroll text um, for uh, the selected wheel item only. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm just showing you that it's 
possible um, for every wheel item that's displayed. All right. Um, and that pretty much concludes the um, features and uh, changes within version 3.2.4. There are some fixes. I'm not going to go over those, but I will certainly put them in the, um, uh, the description associated with the video. Um, but again, it's just more kind of uh, uh, refinements to, uh, to the software and to the user experience, obviously. Um, now, I do have one more thing to demonstrate, and it's really kind of a work in progress. And that is language support. All right, so I'll just move that over there. So I change windows to uh, use a display language of French, and I'll rerun the app. And as you can see, it's in French here on the uh, startup progress. And, uh, and as you can see in the main window, it's all in French, along with uh, tooltip text. <clears throat> Even as far as uh, wheel item templates. All right. And uh, let's see if I go into theme manager, your theme details, the, the labels are all in French, buttons are in French. All right, that's about as far as I've taken it. Um, I just it, I just wanted to see if I could do it, and obviously I can. Um, so there is an awful lot um, that I have not translated yet. Obviously, you can understand that that's a great deal of work. And if the context of some of this stuff in French is not correct, um, that's 100% on me. I used Google Translate. So, um, you know, once I, once I go through the, the French version and I want to work on the next set of uh, languages, I'm going to try and find some volunteers that can actually do the translation for me into, the, into those target languages. All right. But thanks to everybody on Patreon that um, has voted on the language poll so far getting some really good results. Uh, it's, it's good to see that French is kind of up there uh, first, because obviously that was the first language I, I had tackled. So um, yeah, so thanks to everyone uh, on Patreon in general, just supporting me. Uh, it's awesome uh, with all your feedback and uh, words of encouragement. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to kind of show that off. Um, I've made a start with uh, language support and, and clearly um, I'll be rolling it out to other languages and uh, uh, help everyone out. And you're not writing notes. What does this mean? What does this mean? Having sticky notes all over the place. You don't want that. But anyway, that's 324. I'll uh, go ahead and edit this video and uh, get it out there as quickly as possible today and uh, get the new build out there on uh, Patreon, along with the, uh, the trial version and the trial version with the LaunchBox database. So I've got my work cut out for me today. Um, so I guess I'll see you guys in uh, a couple of weeks. I've got a couple more items to uh, address and that will conclude uh, the 3.2 version of uh, the Community Theme Creator. Okay, uh, so until the next time, take care, everyone, and thanks, and thanks again for all your support. Thank you.